Hey guys, Mike from the Off Grid Shop. Welcome. If this is your first time to the channel, don't forget to comment down below. We love joining the conversation, have a conversation about what you're doing with your off grid lifestyle. So look forward to having a conversation with you down there. Also, if you do get something out of this video, we'd really appreciate it if you could like and actually share it with someone else if you think it'd be helpful for somebody else. So, guys, what we're talking about in this video here today, I'm going to show you some stuff that when you're designing and thinking about your off grid solar system, some things to think about, just some basic stuff to think about that you want to share with someone helping you design your off grid solar system. So, let's jump around. I'm going to share my screen with you now. We'll jump over here. Okay, cool. So this is on our website. So it's theoffgridshop.com.au. If you want to go have a look at this, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, now, if you are not don't really want to be contacted by a solar system, please don't fill this out. <laughs> feel free to use it. If you really want to get a spreadsheet, I'll actually put in the link in the description below. Uh, I'll put the link to a Google Sheet, which can help you calculate all the energy usage and stuff like this here. So I'll put it down below. But this is some stuff to think about. Now, what are you looking to supply? The smaller the system, smaller the building that you want to supply, the easier this is all going to be. So something to think about is the size of your property. If you are building, the smaller you keep the footprint of your building, the easier this is going to power. So there's some things to think about. Um, where would you like the solar panels installed? Now, the options you really have, you can put them on your house, on your shed. A lot of people put them on their shed because a lot of people going off grid, they build the shed, they put the power system up, and they use the power system to build the house. So something to think about consider. Personally, I know this costs extra. But if you can put them on the ground for longevity, you can adjust the panels. And also, over time, it's going to help you maintain and clean those solar panels a lot easier. Just for me, an example, I'm going for a knee surgery this week. And for me, putting panels on the ground so you can adjust the panels and also clean them over time, it's great. And look, the reality is with the cleaning, if it rains once a month, very rarely would your solar want cleaning. If you live bush, I live in town, they get covered with stuff all the time. So something to think about. Now, it's really important to think about which way your roof faces when you're building, if you are building a shed, and make sure you get true north, not magnetic north. There is a difference. Do some research on your own local area. How many people are going to live in the property? So some other things to think about is what sort of cooking that you're going to do and hot water. Hot water is pretty important. The more you do with gas, the smaller the solar system you can do. A solar hot water with electric backup is sort of my favorite sort of type of solar system off-grid. You can actually do electric hot water these days and use some really cool, cool tricky products. There's a product in Australia called Catch Power, which you can use to use your excess solar of a day off-grid. So when your back panels turn off and your batteries are full, because that does, does happen, Catch Power can turn back on your solar panels, charge your hot water, and then not drain your batteries, which is pretty cool. So something to think about how you're going to do your hot water. What sort of cooktop? Me and myself post these days, induction cook is so energy efficient I'm not really a big fan of gas. To me, I'm trying to do everything from renewables as much as possible. And I think go down the electric path. And the reality is it's all going to come down to budget. Electricity, it's going to cost you more up front. I look at gas as like finance. Yeah, it might be cheaper up front, but you're going to keep paying that for the rest of your life. So something to think about. Your oven, same thing. With oven, electric oven, what we actually don't have on our website here, which um, we're going to get fixed up, is fire. There's an amazing program in Australia called a Nectar's Baker oven. They're really amazing. So some other things to think about is how you're going to cook and do all that sort of stuff. Fridge freezers. A lot of people will get worried about running chest freezers. Fridges are actually really energy efficient these days. So they use a couple of hundred watts. Most proper size fridges these days use less than a kilowatt hour a day. Now things that, if you think about anything that's really going to cost you off-grid that uses energy, if anything that heats or cools fast. So just think about that. Closed dryers, I've got a real funny one for you about solar power clothesline, so I'll actually do a video on that to share that one with you. I'll do a short. Now, um, washing machines, watch out if they don't have heating elements and things like that in them. Now, the other big question we get asked pretty much every single day designing off-grid solar systems is can I run an air conditioner? Now, you can do anything you want if you've got the budget. That's what it all comes down to. The best money spent is making your house that doesn't require heating or cooling. If you can get your house that doesn't require heating or cooling for less than 10 days a year, is what you're sort of aiming to do if you get to the chance. If you're lucky enough to design your house, that's what you want to be able to achieve. But if not, cooling with an aircon off grid is really easy because you don't direct from sun, you whack a few more solar panels up. What makes air conditioning hard off grid is when you're trying to do it overnight from batteries or in winter trying to heat from batteries. So just some stuff to think about, guys. And one other thing I'd really sit down and nut out yourself is what it's going to cost. It's a big disconnect I see a lot with people is my budget and what I want to do. So it's really important to sit down and work out the person that you're helping design your system of working, okay, well, this is my budget. What can I get for my budget? Or 
work out, say, this is what I want, what's it going to cost me, and work backwards. And like I said, the best money you spend on any of this sort of stuff is energy efficient appliances. So when designing, guys, just hopefully there's some real helpful tips when you're looking to design an off-grid solar system. If you want us to give you help and give you some advice, feel free to fill out that form. Put all your details down. One of the guys will get in contact with you and let you know and have a conversation. Just let us know down below if you are really genuinely, you want to buy a solar system because we'll get thousands of people fill this out. Or if you're not, you're just doing it for a test, let us know. We can give you the Excel spreadsheet. We'd help you do all the calculations and work this stuff out. It's so important to work your energy demand out and your loads out. Off-grid's completely, you know, grid-connected solar system where everyone's selling a, you know, a fixed price, fixed size solar system, buy today, get two C-free solar panels. Off-grid's not about that. So much more going to off-grid because if you don't get it right, you're going to be unhappy and you're going to spend a load of money and you might have worked out for an extra $2,000, I could have used an electric oven and got rid of a gas fireplace.